Hey everybody and welcome to episode 4 of the Minecrafters Industrial Craft 2 tutorial series and in this tutorial we're going to be talking all about the advanced miner, the pump, the induction furnace, recycler, and even some more neat blocks. So get ready. <laughs> All right, now that first little block that you just saw me launch up on was in was called a magnetizer, and you can attach um, upwards of 20 or as many as 20 iron fences to either the top or the bottom of this machine. Provide it with a low voltage um, power line, and make sure you're wearing some type of metal boot, and you can just run right up to it, and it will shoot you straight up. You can also use the iron fence, um, and if you run into it and crouch, it will uh, drop you down a little bit faster than a ladder will. Also included in IC2 are these rubber sheets, and uh, there is an empty space underneath this rubber sheet because these basically act like a trampoline of sorts. So you can see I'm, I'm bouncing a little bit on it. If I run back up here and then I jump off, you'll see me bounce a little bit. Boing, boing, boing. Okay, so that's what those do. Um, if you want to just fall off most of your places onto rubber mats, you can go ahead and do that. Oh, look, the next episode. Hazmat suit required. All right, um, as the title said, we're going to talk about the miner and uh, the advanced miner. Um, these are pretty neat blocks. Um, let's talk about what this looks like inside. It has a spot for a drill and we learned about drills in episode two. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a diamond drill. We're also going to need some mining pipe and either an OD or an OV scanner. Now what does an OD or an OV scanner mean? Um, these are used to, uh, and they don't really work that well, but if you right click or they don't work that well in this version. If you right click, we'll tell you um, the ore dens density and the ore value. So if I was to walk over here, um, the OV scanner is a little bit more superior. So let's see the ore value is one. Even if I click on diamond, it doesn't change. This says ore density is zero. I'm not sure if these are quite worked out yet, but for the reason that we are going to be using them today, they work just fine. And uh, the OV scanner, which as you can see, holds uh, much more EU than the OD scanner. So this is its superior brother. Um, this will uh, change the mining radius of your miner. Um, the OD scanner will change it to 5x5 five five, and the OV scanner will change it to a 9x9, nine nine, which is huge. And I'll demonstrate how that works in just a minute. But to have this thing operate, you can either put a battery in here or hook it up to uh, low voltage, 32 EU per tick. We're going to put a diamond drill in this spot or a regular drill, depending on how fast you want to go. Then we're going to put an OD or an OV scanner inside of here. Right now, I'm just going to leave it empty though. Next, you're going to have to take some of this mining pipe, and depending on how high you are in the world, you're going to need enough mining pipe to make it down to the bottom of the world. So if I take some mining pipe and put it inside there, it's going to automatically start up, and it's going to drop this little thing. Now, for every drop, it's going to consume a, a little piece of pipe, and it's going to start slowly going down, and it will um, deposit any ores that it finds, or any blocks that it finds, into a chest that is adjacent to it, okay? Um, these consume, uh, I think they do consume a fairly large amount of power, um, upwards of uh, 200 EU per tick, depending on the configuration inside of them. Um, but that's how the regular basic miner works. Now, if I was to take an OD or OV scanner and put it inside of there, you would still see a single hole. However, um, it would be behaving a little bit differently. And I will show you how differently it behaves with those scanners inside of it. And when we actually have some ore, because there's no ore in this world. Um, let's talk about uh, how to use this thing first, okay? So here we have a pump, and it's uh, made its way down, um, or a, a miner, excuse me. And this is a bad example. Let's not show you that. Okay, here we go. We have a miner here, and we have a bunch of ore. Let's pretend this was your overworld. Let's go ahead and put some mining pipe inside of here. Now, I have an OV scanner in here, so it'll search a 9x9 nine nine area radius, which is, to be exact, this big block over here. So this is a 9x9. Nine this is a 5x5. Five five. It's going to take a radius of 9x9, nine nine, and it's going to search for all the ores inside of there, and it's going to go ahead and, and go drill them out, and it's going to go find them. So to demonstrate how um, this works, I'm going to go ahead and put some mining pipe in here, and it's going to drop down. And because I have that scanner in there, it's going to mine the ore just like it normally would. It's going to mine this one, but then it's going to recognize that there's some ore over here, and it's going to drill over to get that. Okay. Um, it will also drill or diagonally and uh, there's some down here so we'll get that in this layer let me see if I can see that happening 
There it is. It's branching out to go and get this diagonally. So it takes a little bit longer on the diagonals, but it will go ahead and get that ore. And it will go ahead and mine this side here. It's going to drop down to the next level. It's going to mine all the way out to here. It's going to mine all the way out to here. And everything that you get will be deposited into this chest here. Okay, so the miner is a really neat little block, especially with these scanners inside of it. And it works uh, pretty simply. Um, next, and now I might as well just talk about here, is the pump. And the pump has a space for a battery here, has a space for empty cells here, and it has an output space here, and you can put various different types of uprates into it. Now, the pump, um, I have a little setup here, actually. I'll explain it in a second. Um, I have a miner here, and I have a pump adjacent to it. So if you watch my videos on Quarry Plus, um, you'll probably already know what's coming. The uh, miner, in conjunction with the pump, will also take out liquids and put them um, into either cell form or it will uh, put it into liquid form and you can pump it out in whichever direction you want. So if I go ahead and grab a bunch of mining pipe here, we're going to mine as normal. It's going to hit some lava. It's going to take the lava. It's going to throw it into the pump and let's get it, let it get one more. There's some ore in there. There we go. Found another bit of lava. And I have this uh, fluid ejector upgrade, which is similar to the regular ejector upgrade, except it works with fluids. And I have the fluid being automatically ejected and put into this geothermal generator inside of here. And I have the geothermal generator actually powering my miner. Um, so if you're in an area with a lot of lava, this is a really neat uh, thing to do. It's kind of a self-sufficient setup. And uh, from what I've read on the forums and wikis, you get a 50% power boost um, or energy reduction boost or some kind of benefit from using a geothermal generator in conjunction with a pump on your miner. I hope that makes sense. Okay, So uh, if you add the OV scanner, you can get a huge 9x9 radius. If you add the um, OD scanner, it'll look for ores in a radius just like this. And if you attach a pump to a regular miner, it will uh, suck some fluids out. All right, next we have the advanced miner, and there's a block that uh, um, you need to make this that we have not discussed yet. I'll discuss it a little bit later. Um, but the advanced miner is just what it says. It's a, it's a miner that's uh, more advanced than its predecessor. And you can put an OV or OD scanner inside the advanced miner, which will uh, um, change the uh, size of an area which will mine. So I have an OV scanner in here, and you can clearly see that that's a much larger area than uh, this here. So this will mine, I think, a 32 by 32 or, or something like that radius. Um, you can also blacklist or whitelist, and you can switch between modes, and you can add different ores in here. And when it hits those ores, um, let's say blacklisted uh, redstone, it will not mine redstone. Currently, that actually does not work in the experimental build, but I'm uh, pretty sure that they'll have that fixed very soon. Um, it'll also tell you um, the mining level right here. Let me go down to here. It's at, but mm, we're at 40, so it's the one right below me. That will tell you where it is. Why can't I get it back up? Here we go. Da -da -da. So it has a little neat little interface right there. It won't drop any mining pipe, which is a good thing about this one. Um, you can choose to restart the miner by clicking right here. And uh, you can also add some upgrades into this machine. Uh, this will uh, take a beast load of power. And if I go ahead and turn it on, you'll see how fast this thing actually is. Now I have a bunch of upgrades inside of here that would probably make um, your entire power system buckle. I have uh, 32 overclocker upgrades, which we haven't really discussed yet, and I apologize for that. Um, I promise you I'll, I'll nail it down in one of these episodes. But that's basically how the advanced miner works. There's no pipe involved. It just mines out a straight ginormous block. And uh, from what I understand, you cannot attach a pump to the advanced miner. Now hopefully that'll be something that they change. Or maybe I'm just uh, not even telling the truth at all. Somebody can correct me in the comments below. Um, but this is the advanced miner. I just have everything going into a nullifier here um, from the thermal expansion tutorial. Okay, and this will mine a pretty huge hole in your land. All right, let's move on to a couple of the machines. Now, these two I'm really going to provide an extremely vague description on because they're for like uh, multiplayer servers and basically they're for servers where nobody trusts each other. Um, this is a trade mat You can basically uh, have an inventory adjacent to it, and people can trade one thing for another, and you can set uh, what you want. So if you want um, this, you'll have to pay this for it, and so on and so forth. And uh, there's different modes here. I'm not really going to talk about it. Energy, energy mat is really the same thing, um, except you pay industrial credits for EU to charge up your batteries or charge up your machine. Again, it's for servers where nobody trusts each other, pretty much. Um, and, and they're very obsolete. The electrolyzer now, this is an extremely slow-moving machine that will take regular water cells and uh, 
create electrolyzed water cells. And uh, you will need electrolyzed water cells down the road, but that is just one of the machines that can do it. Um, I forget if there's a faster way to do this. There is in Greg Tech for sure. Uh, but in any case, um, that will electrolyze your water cells for you. And it will take, um, ooh, I'm not sure how much you would take. Let's check really quick here, electrolyzer. It actually doesn't say, unfortunately. And if the EU reader worked, that would be great. Um, I'm sure it's right in the wiki. You guys can figure it out. That's fine. That's what it does. Next, we have the induction furnaces, um, furnace, singular, um, which are really cool. Um, basically, you just need to provide this with uh, up to 128 EU per tick, which is medium voltage. And uh, what, what it will do is allow you to smell like two things at once, which is really awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and take some iron ore and some gold ore, okay? And uh, this will need to, to warm up, so I'm at heat 100% here, and that's because I provided it with a redstone signal in the back. I just flipped that lever, and it will heat up all on its own, and it will consume one EU per tick while it is on and running. This one, if I go ahead and put uh, some ores inside of here, it's going to uh, not really work at all because it's at zero heat. And as soon as it starts heating up, it will start smelting, but you can see that it's really awful slow. But, however, if you keep this spinning up at 100% heat, you can actually smelt uh, two different things at the same time and uh, have them automatically um, pulled out by some sort of uh, pipe and maybe an import bus or uh, an item duct from thermal expansion. And there's a spot here for a battery, so that's the induction furnace. This is a really awesome block. Um, and I think it only uses 16 EU per tick, so uh, it's a really great alternative to overclocking a regular furnace. Next, let's go ahead and talk about a recycler. And the recycler is a really basic machine, and I just have neglected to talk about it up until now. But uh, we will need this soon, so let's just go ahead and show you uh, what, how this thing works. Basically, um, just hook it up to anywhere from uh, low voltage to uh, transform it up to extreme voltage. And this will just eat anything that you throw into it. And it will depend, the speed of the machine will depend on how much you have it overclocked. So this is how it uh, works normally. Let's put three overclockers. It'll work a little bit faster. And this will take any item and just destroy it and try to make it into scrap. So you can put a quantum suit in here. And, oh, I didn't get anything from, from a quantum suit. Okay, so that's what that does. It will make scrap for you. Scrap is going to be used later on in the mass fabricator. Um, which is a really diesel uh, machine and which is where we're really headed with this mod. Um, once you get nine scrap, you can put them in a nine by or a three by three crafting grid, which is nine scrap to make a scrap box and the multiplier will be just a little bit more. So this is what the recycler does, just uh, destroys everything and tries to turn it into scrap. All right, before I let you go, I just want to talk about two more quick things with the electrolyzer. The first one is that it will not start electrolyzing water cells until it reaches at least like 70% of its uh, EU buffer inside of here, and it can hold up to 20,000 EU. And also, if you have an energy storage device next to it, um, it will act as sort of an additional um, energy storage unit for that device. So if I place an MFE next to it, um, the, the electrolyzer will start dumping all of its EU inside of here. So you can actually put a bunch of these right next to it. Oh, not a bunch of those. A bunch of uh, electrolyzers next to it to increase um, the storage of your energy storage device by up to 20,000 EU each. So that's something that you can do with those. Okay, so two quick things about that. Um, the next one is those overclockers. I'm just going to talk about them right now and I'm also going to throw in the uh, energy storage upgrades which will increase um, the energy storage by 50,000 E. And why does that say 50,000? That is so not true. Um, it should be 10,000, I believe. Let me not put any in there. So we have 5,000 if I put in one. Yeah, it, it's only adding 10,000. That tooltip is a little bit screwed up. Uh, again, we're in experimental, so uh, I can't really expect everything to be perfect. Um, but the overclocker upgrades are very self-explanatory. They'll decrease the process time um, by 33% and increase the power. Um, to Well, hold on. Let me put one in there. Here we go. Decrease the process time to 70%. Uh, that's with one, um, and increases the power to 160. Now, for every one of these that you put in there, it's uh, it's an exponential um, increase. So 256 power, 49% process time, and uh, it will start ramping up 4 to 9% power. Um, and I, if I have like 16 in here, it will use uh, a a bloody ton of power, bloody ton of power. Um, but it will also smelt your stuff really fast. Hee <laughs> hee.
<laughs> just like that. Okay, so that's what the uh, overclocker upgrades do. Just be careful that you don't uh, bog down your power lines, which we talked about in the last episode with uh, tons of overclockers, um, because they will start using a massive amounts of energy. Um, if you want a little one furnace like this that processes everything, that might be feasible, um, or just add in a couple. It's really not, you know, you don't have to wait too long with even three upgrades. Okay, so it's pretty quick. That's about the size of a thermal expansion furnace. Um, here's some iron scaffolding added in by IC2. We talked about the regular stuff um, in the other episode. And uh, I believe that's it for this episode. Um, we're going to start talking about nuclear next. Um, we're actually going to talk about the um, industrial centrifuge and, oh, good grief, um, the ore washing plant and the thermal centrifuge, excuse me. Um, I shouldn't be in there without my hazmat suit on. Um, that'll be really cool. I'll tell you how to uh, squish your ores into something even better than you might expect and also how to start processing uranium and making those fuel rods for the nuclear reactors that we're going to start building pretty soon. Uh, make sure you like the video. If you like it, drop a comment and below if you have a question. And as always, guys, make sure you check us out on all of our social media outlets and stay poised.